And we're live. Welcome. I'm so excited today to be interviewing Joshua Bloom. Of course, I am Jean Berry. I'm your game inventor mentor. And I love working with coaches, authors, speakers, consultants, people who are doing really cool things in the world to add a cool piece of fun <laughs> through games and card decks. I met Joshua Bloom actually through a mutual friend. And we, as we talked about all the cool things we did in the world, we found that we had actually all kinds of things in common. And I got very excited about the really interesting and effective healing work that he's doing and that he created his own card deck to go with it. <laughs> so right in my wheelhouse, I'm really excited. Welcome to, thank you so much for being here, Joshua. Um, you want to say hey and, and tell our listeners a little bit about you? Hey, <laughs> and thank you, Jean, for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I feel so honored to be um, talking with you right now because we have an opportunity to really help anyone who's listening here, and that makes me feel so empowered and so good because when we connect like this, we make magic happen, and I love that. <laughs> so, um, yes, I, what I do is I help empaths transform their lives quickly, if not instantly, in many different areas. So as we know, uh, empaths are people who are very sensitive, and I am one of those people. And I can sense things like across the street that's happening, or I can sense things that are happening in the world that, you know, wake up in the middle of the night, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and it's, it's a little bit nerve-wracking sometimes to be an empath, although it's such a gift at the same time. It's like, you know, weigh it out. <laughs> um, I, love the, I love the experiences I have as an empath, but I also know getting to where I am today took some effort and some time and some really important knowledge that I now have but didn't have moving forward. I didn't know about um, many different things. Like one of the things I, I, I didn't know about, which was interesting, was the spirit world. I always thought that it was noisy just all the time. And that was from the spirit world. But one day I turned the spirit world off. I learned how to do that. And it was quiet. It was quiet for the first time in my entire life. <laughs> and wow. I, I didn't know quiet existed. I thought it was just always noisy. And so... Things like that that empaths deal with, um, it's so powerful to understand and learn how to maneuver around some of these things, overwhelm from getting too much information at a time. You know, we're getting information from so many different uh, areas, so many different senses, um, in addition to our five senses, right? Getting information, it becomes, it becomes overwhelming if, 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 uh, as well as when not just overwhelming, but we pick up other people's energies and what they're thinking and feeling, and it becomes very difficult at times. So being able to space that out a little bit and allow ourselves to get into alignment and into a place where we can keep moving forward because we keep getting stuck, and that really is my specialty, helping people get there. And um, like I said, my, my experience was kind of a struggle. Okay. And well, hey, I'm going to have you hang oh, on for one second because sure. we have a bunch of people joining us. And so yeah. I, I want to I say hi to the people that are coming in because I, I do want to get deeper into your story and, and how you got here and those kind of things. And so welcome. I, I want to welcome those of you who are watching. And um, I'm talking to Joshua. And, and of course, we dived, dove, it, not, <laughs> we dove, yes, right into the era of empaths. And I know a lot of people who are in this kind of world who love um, cards, who love oracles, who love healing, all those kind of things are empaths. And the exactly. things going on in the world right now absolutely are kind of impacting <laughs> all of us in, in a deep way. So it's interesting that we're meeting here today you know, inside of a lot of upset that's going on in the world and, and a lot of people feeling a lot of feelings. And so, you know, so, so thank you for that. And I do want to also um, raise up a little bit uh, uh, about you because you are an internationally acclaimed uh, author 
and an authority on quantum healing. You invented your own healing mod modality through doing um, lots and lots of training through the years and finding the things that actually work and how they work quickly, which is really cool. You are also the executive producer at the, the cutting edge film, The Ultimate Answer is Inside, and host of the internet TV show, Emotionally Free TV. So you are doing tons and tons and tons of things on the planet to really shift the world and make it a better place. And you are known for saying you were born to be limitless. So tell me then how you got here to this point of being limitless. Obviously, at some point, you didn't feel that way. <laughs> no, I didn't always feel limitless. And um, even times now, I don't feel limitless in certain areas of my life. We're always working on those things, right? So, you know, working on ourselves to become limitless for me started very young in my life where I bumped up against anxiety and I didn't know I was an empath I didn't know I was picking up other people's stuff so it may not have even been my anxiety and so when I was moving forward in my life I hit lots of bumps and stumps and all sorts of things that made it very difficult it even kept me from going outside. I mean, there were times in my life that I was scared to walk around the block because for some reason that was scary. I mean, today it's not like that for me, but at one time it was. And so very difficult to, to um, deal with things when you have a lot of anxiety. And I had anxiety to an extreme. I mean, it was really, really big and really, really scary. And um, you, so, you know, it goes up, you know, first we have stress right? It starts to get low, <laughs> we get some stress, and then we go up a little bit higher and we have some anxiety, and then we have like really anxious, and then we have fear, and then we have like really super, super scared, right? So all of those levels of stress, because it's all stress, right? But it's stress at different intensities. And when we have stress at so many intensities, especially as an impact, we don't know how to deal with it because it doesn't turn off. It's just, there's only an on button and the off button, we seem to have lost that. Where'd it go? You know, <laughs> is it over there? Um, and so we learn to dial down our stress. We learn to release because if you don't learn to release as an empath, we hold it all in, not just our own stuff, but everybody else's stuff too. And we get overloaded. It's like the bucket is full. <laughs> you know? And when that happens, we get very, um, we get more and more stressed and more and more in a place where we don't know what to do, what to say, or how to move forward. And then we try to, you know, use whatever tools we have in the moment, but releasing has got to be the best tool to let things go and make it easier for ourselves to balance out. So where did you start on that, that journey? You know, obviously you found some places that you were having stress and, and even, you know, fear, you know, like the whole, all, all of it. Right. And, and holding too much in your bucket. <laughs> where did you start? Like where, what was, what was the, the impetus that had that all start? Well, I just, I just started to have anxiety attacks and, um, during this time, I was listening to some, you know, well-known speakers like Anthony Robbins, and I was listening to other people like that. And when I was listening to them, I thought, well, I really enjoy listening to them. Wouldn't that be great for me to do something like that? So I was always looking to do something like this, but couldn't see the path. So what's interesting is that as I uh, started to get anxiety, I started to study it's sort of like quick, <laughs> you, know, you know, you're already in trouble. You, you're, you're past the point of no return and you have to do something to resolve it. So then I started to pick up any kind of information that I could. And as an empath, what's really great is I was attracting the right things. So I attracted different healing modalities. Actually, I learned about 20 of them and I, in most of them, I became certified. And so I, start to learn all of these healing modalities and yes, they helped to a point, but unfortunately I wasn't really 
succeeding as I thought it would. I figured, oh, I would learn hypnosis, right? And hey, then that would work. Oh yeah, kind of. You know, then I EFT. You know, then that would work. Yeah, that worked maybe better than hypnosis, but wasn't really giving me what I needed. So each little modality that I learned gave me another puzzle piece to understanding how healing itself works. Because I noticed that in every single healing modality, it doesn't matter which one it is, it has one thing in common. And that one thing is relaxation. Every single healing modality, no matter what it is, no matter what it does or how it does it, the relaxation comes in somewhere. Now in EFT, the emotional freedom technique, the relaxation comes at the end. It, it, you do the tapping and then the relaxation comes later, right? But in hypnosis, it's the other way around. The relaxation comes first, right? So, but somewhere in there, there's going to be relaxation. And I thought that was quite interesting that relaxation could show up in many different ways. It, it may not show in the way you think it would in a healing modality. Well, then I noticed that a lot of the healing modalities weren't working for me. <laughs> um, a lot. And so I worked harder. And then people would tell me, well, Joshua, you're working too hard. <laughs> I'm like, if you understood what I was feeling and going through, you would say, keep going. <laughs> you know. So I worked hard. I worked hard. And, and unfortunately, I didn't know how to work smart yet. <laughs> uh, but I worked hard to learn new things. And I learned so many new things. And I realized that everybody is working at the strategy level. Every program you buy, everything that's out there, they teach you a step-by-step, um, I guess it's a system, right? It's a step-by-step -step system that says, do this first, do this next, do this next, and do that next, and then boom, you should have the result. Well, as we know, a percentage of people with a strategy will do well. And then there's a percentage of people that will do well but need more. And there's a percentage of people that will do not as good at all, and they will fail. So that's what happens when you use a strategy. There's going to be those three categories. And I think I was in the third one. <laughs> well, sure, sure. And I think that this is really interesting because I think that a lot of our viewers are going to be fairly similar to that, is that, you know, they may find that they – found something they're like that's amazing and whether it even be inside of creativity or healing or uh, some other sort of modality or even just looking at you know we start to look at marketing and business and we'll get we'll get there too even talking about business how this same idea applies is that we keep looking we're seeking because we found things that worked we found things that worked partially or we found things that flat out for us heck no, you know, like that was not aligned with us at all. And, but for some reason we would keep going because we didn't have other choices. You know, we didn't really see that, you know, even listening inside of us. And, you know, I have um, Lois here on the line is today. Lois actually is a, a spirit um, channeler. She's channel spirit guides. And, um, and she says, I think my empath unreleased, I'm not, oh, the manifested, oh, yeah, that the empath unreleased manifested for her as severe migraines since the age of 10. And so, yes, when, before she learned to release that severe headaches, I mean, that's really something else. And so, and when she started on her healing and spiritual path, no migraines. And so this is it. Sometimes it's us not even listening to our calling, right? Not doing what we're really called to do. And so it's all of these pieces coming together. And I love you seeing this string coming through, you know, how does each one of these things come through and, and how do we tap into the thing that's really in alignment for us? So I think you're going to tell us that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, what I learned through re learning about all of these healing modalities was that unless you work at identity, spirituality, and purpose, you actually aren't going to get the result that's permanent, and it's going to be harder to get that result. Now, what's interesting, though, is a lot of people work 
they think they're working at those three levels, by the way, they, because they call it spiritual or they call it purpose <laughs> or they call it identity, but actually are working at strategy. It's a strategy to get my identity to here. It's a strategy to get my purpose. Or it's a strategy to do this and that. And so working at the level of, of these three levels, the best way to get there is through what I call beingness. And that's different than meditation, um, but it's in the same area, but it's a little bit different. Beingness is when you are actually not thinking, not doing. It's the opposite of doing, actually. It's being. You're in a place of just being. And quantum energy transformation, that's what we use to get into that beingness. And we get into the beingness and we, and we be there in a place that feels good. It feels that open. It feels resonant. And what's interesting is a lot of people you may notice say, oh, I'm bored. Or, you know, I, I, w- I wish there was something to do, especially now when we're like all kind of locked in to some extent <laughs> from, the, from the COVID virus. And now that we're dealing with all of that, people are bored. Well, you never get bored when you're being. When you're being, you're engaging the beingness, and that's just a wonderful place to be. When my students get into that place, they're like, I don't ever want to leave. (laughs) I want to stay in this place. It's so beautiful. It's so wonderful. And it is. It is so beautiful and wonderful to be in that place. And then from there, we actually access the um, identity, spirituality, and purpose levels, and we create a shift in the quantum field. And by doing so, we can change just about anything. You know, I used to have migraine headaches as well. And I had them very badly. I used to get the aura beforehand. And then, you know, I knew that I had a a certain period of time before I was going to puke. Here, And I had to go and get to a place where I knew I would, like if I wasn't home, for example, I, I need to be in a place, either I need to get home quickly or I would need to find a place to, to be, be okay. And then once it hit, I, it was going to take me about 24 to 48 hours to get over the headache itself. And after, the aftermath was very painful. So it was, it was like the head hurt so badly. I, the, the lights were so bright. Even if the lights weren't on, it was too bright, right? So it was just so intense. And then I would have cluster migraines. So if that wasn't enough, in a day or two, I'd get another one. Happy day. <laughs> and so I'd have to deal with that. So how did I change that? Because one day I said, I can't live my life like this. You know, at first it was really cool. I was in college getting a migraine headache. Hey, I can't go to class today, got a migraine headache. So I, 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 was, I had lots of great excuses to get out of lots of things. So instead of saying no, migraine it was really like magic, right? But then I realized that that wasn't a way to live my life because it was a very painful way <laughs> to live my life and limiting. You know, I right. didn't know when it was going to show. And when it showed, I had to run home. So that wasn't a good, a good answer. Right. And I think, you know, a lot of our viewers are, 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 are kind of feeling that same thing. You know, uh, Carolyn saying, you know, when I find being creative, like this, is, this was kind of access to start seeing, oh, I don't have to be that way. I can I can live inside of my creative world. Oh, it opens up so many different things. And absolutely, um, it never being bored. Yeah, we have a couple of people like yeah. No, when when they're in that state, that flow state. You know, sometimes when you call it in the art world of being, you know, really truly. You, how can you be bored in that? That's amazing. <laughs> exactly. When you're feeling amazingness, uh, it's not boring. <laughs> That is awesome. That is awesome. And so um, I, I want to actually I, I want to jump forward to your cards because I, I want oh, sure. I really want to make sure that we talk about them and, and then we'll, we'll keep moving around. At some point, you decided, you know, after you created this amazing system and you and you used it with people and they're like, this is amazing. Like and, and you found this this intersection of of everything that you had learned and this deep yearning inside of the planet for that wisdom. At some point you said, you know, we're doing all those. I need a deck. (laughs) Absolutely. 
Well, I was teaching my Come to the Edge program, and um, which is my advanced program that teaches quantum energy transformation, the whole body of knowledge of it. And when I was teaching this program, I was teaching it at this point in person. Now I teach it online, but it was, it was taught in person um, many years ago. And as I'm teaching my Come to the Edge program, I had an advanced class. They were pretty good at understanding me, knowing where we were going. Um, they were able to tweak what they already knew and make it even more powerful. And so the last day of the training, I had run out of material. <laughs> I, I even did the extra material I added into the program just in case I'd run out. <laughs> this, this is what happens when you have great students, right? Oh, they, I they, know, it's they, amazing. they go fast. <laughs> so, um, as an empath at that moment, I said, um, uh oh, uh, they're coming because, you know, the students are going to arrive at some point in my, in my office and we're going to be doing a class doing I don't know what. <laughs> so, um, I, I, decided to get the cards, to get some, get some Oracle cards. I didn't have my own at the time. And all of a sudden, an idea came to my mind that I could actually make a game. So I started to develop this game, and it's almost like a download. It just downloaded um, almost instantly, because I couldn't write it down fast enough. It was coming faster than I could write. And I was like, oh, I could do this and this. And it was a quantum game. So it was actually using the quantum field to heal. And that was pretty amazing. And so I wrote it all down and I typed it all up and then, you know, just making it to run into my class and maybe I was five minutes late or something. And I walk in and say, hey, I know what we're doing today, just like five minutes ago, you know? <laughs> so um, they were okay because they loved what we did before. And I took them through this game and people started to heal using the cards, and I thought that was powerful. So many years later, I said, well, I'm using these other cards that don't really necessarily align with my work. They're just, they're just somebody's deck, and, and it was a good deck, but it didn't have the words that we use, like being in your body or connecting to your higher self, these kinds of things that we, we use in our own language. So I wanted to have one that did that. So I hired an artist to work with me and the artist worked with me on a daily basis and started to, um, the artist I think worked with me for about a year and about six months in, we were able to finish the cards, maybe six to eight months. I don't remember exactly, but six, to eight months in, um, he had developed the, um, the, the deck based on me teaching him my entire modality so that he understood not just the words, but what do they mean and what's the context of those meanings and how did that actually, how would that work in, in the game? So I, I got my cards uh, already all done and then got them printed and then here they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, can we play? <laughs> yes, so absolutely. You, I'm, I'm going to pull them out of the box here. So here's the box. It is um, the the cards are through the quantum portal or the oracle cards, and um, they're really cool. Here we go. They're nice. They're the nice big cards. I really love this size because they're really they're really cool. So how would you guide us then to to use them today for our sure. like? What can we do for maybe everyone who's here or watching later? Um, what would be a fun um, query? Well, what or... we can do okay. is, uh, would you like to work on something? Uh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ooh. <laughs> on the spot right here, right now. On the spot. How about that? How about that? Oh, man. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. I'm just going to say yes because we're here. How, how fun would that be? And what would you like to work on? Is there something that you'd like to release? Um. Well, yes, because right now, and I think that some other people might feel the timeliness of this, I am, I am feeling quite triggered by a lot of the things that are going on. And, and having, being the powerful voice that I am, and speaking it in a way that really feels amazing to me and the people I'm speaking to. And so I, I get very shut down about that sometimes because I, I, you know, don't want to be judged. I want to be make sure everyone loves me. <laughs> <laughs> no one else wants that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. 
because there's so much going on right now energetically. And if it's not one thing, it's another, honestly, it's just, it's just piling up. And it's, and if you're not, it's like the triggers are piling up too. So you're triggered about one thing and you're not quite over that yet. And then another one comes about and you're like, oh, but then three others come about. And you're like, okay, I got enough here. It's, it's, it's me too. It's, it's, been, it's been that way for me as well. So um, would you like to use the cards on your end? Okay, I can use okay. the cards, sure. So shuffle them up as much as you want, as much as you feel like they're shuffled. Until usually one comes flying out for me. <laughs> it's like, That's good too. Is the you like, you like, okay. You like intuitive jumping them. cards? Exactly. The, a bunch actually <laughs> fell on the floor. So now I'm going to shuffle the just the four that, four that fell, fell on the floor. I just have four to pick from now. Let's see. Okay, it's this one. Okay. Aha. Momentum. So it's interesting um, about this card because momentum is about um, really picking up speed. And when you pick up speed, especially in the quantum field, you actually create um, a fast change. In, in a sense, when you, if you think about releasing, letting go of things, releasing might be going slow like this. But if you get momentum by doing it more, it goes faster, like rolling down the hill, right? So you're rolling down the hill, rolling down the hill, it goes faster and faster. So what the card is saying is that it's an opportunity right now for you to um, pick up some momentum so that you don't have to deal with the triggers one at a time, like sort of zapping you. You can take that momentum and move the energy of that. So where in your body do you feel like you don't have enough momentum? Where do you feel the energy of that? Um, well, I'm having like, uh, it, it feels like right here. It's kind of like the upper chest, throat, even jaw. Like I feel it there. Yeah. So it's inner child and choice is really where the, your, your inner child is going, ah, like that. <laughs> right? Makes sense. Your inner child is, is kind of screaming a little bit. And, and so uh, what I'd like you to do is put your awareness at the base of your spine, which is the tailbone. Okay. And just take in three deep breaths. Good. Good. And with your attention at the base of your spine, keep it there. Just feel that feeling in the upper chest and throat and mouth area. And which way does it want to move? Does it want to go up? Does it want to go down? Does it want to go left or right? Or maybe straight out? Which, what does it tell you? Straight out. Oh, good. So I just want you to invite it as if it were a waterfall to just fall out of you. Just move like a waterfall right out. Yes, like that. And just allow it to come out, just falling out. And the waterfall just goes faster and faster with momentum, <laughs> as the card had said. Yes, and just let it all go. And remember to breathe. <sighs> Woo. Ah, did you feel it go? Vroom? Yeah. Did you feel that? Yeah, that's the, yeah. That's the, that's the, um, the movement. So how do you feel now? I feel much lighter. Yeah. Definitely much lighter. Great. So let's pick a card on that. Okay. <laughs> cool. Let's see what the cards have to say. <laughs> what I like about the cards is they actually become your practitioner, right? So the, the cards actually help you and guide you to what to either release next or tell you that you released it or whatever. This one. Excellent. So that's raising frequency. So um, what it's telling you is that two things. One is you've raised your frequency and you could go a little bit higher. So there's something called a candle breath. Have you ever heard of those? I haven't. Okay. A candle breath is a breath. It's, it's sort of a variation of the fire breath. And the candle breath is when you blow out and pretend it's like you have a birthday cake in front of you and that you're going to blow out all the candles of the birthday cake and you need a big breath to do it. And you go, and you blow it all out. Okay. 
So what I'd like you to do is five of those. Five of them, okay. <laughs> In a row. One, two, three, four, one more. Now keep breathing, don't hold your breath, keep breathing. Just nice and easy breath, yeah. Now how do you feel? Expansive. Yeah. Do you notice that you feel stronger inside? Yes. Maybe taller in your, in your, in your body posture? Yeah. So um, that's a spiritual awakening that you just had in just two seconds. <laughs> cool. <In> that moment. <laughs> and notice how you're feeling now. What do you feel differently than before? Oh, it's freezing. Did you notice it got cold? Did you get cold? I I'm felt freezing. a breeze. I'm not cold. No, it, it's, okay. you know, it's, it's warm here in Austin. <laughs> <laughs> warm over there. Okay. Um, I, I, when I feel the cold, it means things are releasing. Oh, well, so, cool. <laughs> yeah. So, so what's different from now, from now that's what you're feeling now from before? Um, honestly, I was feeling a heaviness like here, like I was feeling that today. That was really, I woke up with that today. Yeah, I know what you mean. And so um, that, you know, and of course, I'm like, we're going to interview today. Let's prepare, you know, like, let's get in a good place. We meditate. We, you know, we do those kind of things. <laughs> so, so we get right here right now. And yet that hadn't left. And I feel like that is like seeping out. Like that's, that's going that, that whatever that heaviness was, that's yeah. going. Well, what's really neat about this work is that it moves for about 36 to 48 hours. It moves even when you're not doing anything. So that's kind of cool. So right now you've done the healing and, and moving forward, your body's going to take care of the rest. So the more that you keep your attention at the base of your spine, the more you increase your momentum, which we got that card and, and move forward with momentum and just, and basically putting your attention at the base of your spine puts you into your body. So it gets you out of your head and into a grounded, strong place. Beautiful, beautiful. And so we're getting tons of hearts. Thank you guys for, for all the hearts because this has really been truly amazing and cool. And so what I hear you saying, and, I, and this is what I think is amazing about cards and, and, and Oracle decks, is that you built the energy right inside of these decks. It actually holds that energy. It actually holds it. And so I know a bunch of you who are on this call are creating games and decks like this is what you're doing. And I want you to hear that that's what happens inside of your work. When you intentionally put it there, it actually shows up inside the deck. And then, of course, what Joshua does is he then you know, augments that with his knowledge of what to do with those contexts of, of, you know, what is the add on practice that happens with that, which makes it a really cool piece of um, collateral for your business. I'm going to call that even though this is a I tool like that. that you use in your business, it actually is an incredibly um, powerful piece of business building for you also. Like, do you find then that you have more engagement inside of the people who work with you because they have the cards in their home and they're like, okay. Yeah. The cards are everything to my students, honestly. The cards are a metaphor for them to be able to release and transform their lives any moment they choose. It's like an opportunity, like the cards are an instant opportunity so when they have the cards, they can play with them, but the playing is there is the healing too, you know? So it becomes, it becomes an addiction sometimes where people want to play more with the cards because they feel so good. We just did one thing with you, right? Just one oh, thing. Oh, yeah. And we're doing the game. We're there's, doing that like a hundred times. There's a deck of them, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and we're doing those like a hundred times in the actual game. So... It's like a healing session, even though you got a healing session, it's like a, a much bigger healing session that the cards can offer in just one sitting. So it's really, really powerful. I love, I love the idea of making cards, you were saying, because making cards for your business can be a really, really important tool 
for you and your coaching clients, when you're coaching clients, um, for people to do it on their own. But I also think when making cards, you're, you're allowing your energy to go into those cards, like you said, and they're becoming a part of you. And it's, a, it's one way of getting your energy out there to people so that they can experience you on a deeper level too, because you're the creator of those cards. Right. And one thing that I could suggest in making cards when you want to make them is a lot of times we go into the analytical space of, oh, I have to do these things in order to get the cards done. But I encourage you to go the opposite direction and not go into what do I have to do to get the cards done because, as you know, all of this stuff for me came down in like a in like very quick experience of what, what it should be. So how to get there is to let go of what to do and go into the beingness simply by putting your attention at the base of your spine and allow yourself to just discover and wonder and experience what would cards be like for you. And after you play with this idea, you're going to get so many great goodnesses coming down to you. You will need a tape recorder or some kind of um, recording device to be able to get it all down. But uh, one of the ways that I like to do that that's easy is go take a bath. When you take a bath, You sort of like let everything go. And then when I'm in the bathtub, I have to make sure I either have those notes, you know, those notes that stick on the wall, um, or or my my phone where I can record uh, record what I'm I'm thinking. Because I'm in the beingness, all of a sudden, a billion things come. It's like, this is what you need to do. And that's how I create things. I don't go into the analytical at all. The, the, The analytical comes from the beingness, not the analytical first. The analytical last. We usually do analytical first. Well, what do I need in order to do this job? What do I need to, you know, what are the steps? Nope. I get out of that, get out of that thinking and get out of your head. Stop thinking. Get into the beingness and the whole thing will download to you. I promise it will. Take a bath or go for a walk or just breathe and be in your body with your attention at the base of your spine and you'll start to get this, this download and you'll have the cards that are just right for you. It'll be so beautiful because it will be what your energy is pulling and connecting with in the universe, and it will be so powerful. Beautiful, beautiful. And so actually, you know, something you mentioned about the bath, Angie was actually made a comment earlier about the water and how the water has her feel really in that floaty place and and even closing your eyes when in the water, like that's just really a sweet spot. So, so yes, you and Angie in the water, that's, that's a total thing. And I see also that Anna popped on. Anna Froelich is an extraordinary card artist and she works with people who have brilliant ideas to to put the art on their cards and that kind of thing. So thanks for hanging out with us, Anna, because you are extraordinary at that as well. Um, A couple of people are asking also, where do you get Joshua's cards? And so, yes, I will share that link in just a minute. And Joshua actually has a really cool gift for you today also, which is really, really fun. And um, an experience also for you inside of, um, his work and and what he helps people do and I I I haven't experienced this free gift yet. I'm gonna have to go download it because I'm really kind of excited about it. Do you want to share a little bit about what you have for us, Joshua? And then Absolutely. I'll also share the link about the where you find his cards too. Absolutely. So this is um, you can see my screen there. Yep. Here I'm gonna. Oh, pull, I'm gonna pop it up here on their screen so they can all see it. I'm going to take our names off here so that they're not in the way. And we can see the screen and all that good stuff. There we go. Screen on. There we are. Now you're up. Excellent. So one of the things that's happening right now and why I chose to um, offer this today is because we are having some difficult times, to say the least. And when you're having difficult times, Sleeping is not always easy. And the problem is either getting to sleep or if you wake up getting back to sleep. And either way, you get like three or four, maybe five or maybe six hours, and it's quite not enough sleep that you'd like to have. So this three hours sleep in 15 minutes is something I developed that really works. And it gives you the equivalent of three hours sleep in just 15 minutes. And 
this you can go to www.3hourssleep.com there's two s's for hours and sleep right so 3hourssleep.com and when you go there you'll see what you see on my screen here and it basically when you listen to it it gives you 3 hours of sleep when you didn't get it now the reason that you want to do that is because when you're not sleeping and if you don't make up for your sleep in some way, then the next day you're overtired again, and it creates a pattern, and then you can't get into your sleep cycle. But when you do this, it balances you out, it gets you back into your sleep cycle, and it doesn't give you too much, um, like if you were to go to sleep or take a long nap in the middle of the day, then you won't sleep at night. But if you do this, no problem. You're going to feel rested after doing it, and then you're going to be able to have the ability to sleep that night, which is really, really important. So three hours sleep in 15 minutes is a powerful free gift for you. Just opt in to get it. And I tell you, it will change your life. I'm excited about that. And I'm, you know, I really think that the things that you're doing on the planet are so amazing. <laughs> and there, there is no question that healing and, and being present is really this this space and what you're doing is offering um, all of that amazingness <laughs> in a sweet little package. Uh, Joshua, I didn't ask you for the link for your card deck. I, I wasn't thinking, but can you tell me how people can find that as well? And I'll yeah. put it in the comments here. I'm in, a, I'm in the process of actually creating a new website and it will be done in a couple of weeks. But okay. um, until then, uh, people can email me at oh, help. Beautiful at beingquantum.com. That's B-E-I-N-G-Q-U-A-N-T-U-M.com. So help at beingquantum.com. Be the being this. <laughs> right? Okay, so send an email. Yep, send an email to help at beingquantum.com, and okay. my team will help you get a hold of those cards. Um, they are they're, they're wonderful to use because they become your practitioner. And I know a lot of people, especially now that people are in their homes and they're not always able to get out, um, you need something to give a reflection, to mirror you, to tell you what you might not know. What I like about the cards is that it tells you what you need to release. It tells you what a practitioner would tell you, but maybe you don't have access to one right now. So it's, it's so helpful for the cards to just share what it has to share with you. And here's the real beauty of this deck. You deal with the deck as if it were real life. <laughs> because it is your life, right? You don't, have to, you don't have to have a book of interpretations. Instead, you can look at the card and see what it means to you. Whatever it means. If it means a good thing or a bad thing or whatever it means, use the cards to allow you to release and let go of what's holding you back from being your awesome self. That is amazing. And, you know, I'm sure that we could talk all day because I love all the cool stuff you're doing. And I, I will be posting this. Um, this will be available for replay inside of our Facebook group, our, the Facebook page. It will also be on YouTube. And so we can pick up clips and that kind of thing from there. Yay. And um, I thank you all so much for coming in. If you have questions for Joshua, you can actually add them on the feed here. You can also send him an email at the same email address if there's something specific you want to know about what he was talking about today. But we will monitor this feed also to get your uh, questions answered. And um, thank you so much for sharing your business and your healing and your um, the card decks with this. I'm, I'm really loving this deck. <laughs> of course, Thank you. have I met a deck I haven't loved? No, but this <laughs> one's really special. This has healing built in, which is really exciting. And I think that, you know, what you're bringing to the world is, is really extraordinary. So, so thank you for taking some time to hang out with us today. And um, we will uh, have more Joshua here, I'm sure, <laughs> in the future. So thanks for hanging with us, and um, we'll see you all, all you guys later. Okay. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye.